I really just want to challenge you this morning, and I'm not going to try to, uh, I could go long, guys. I could. I got a lot of notes. But I'm going to try to, to be brief, and uh, I want you to, to grab your Bible. I do not have an outline for you today, but we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 23 through 27. And we're going to look at that portion of Scripture, and our text is going to be Psalms 18, verses 25. So I'm uh, just excited about, about the Word of God and what God wants to do. I want to challenge you today. I want to encourage you today as we step into this, this brand new year. And here's the deal. Re- regardless of where you are at today, regardless of where you're at this morning, I want you to understand that God wants to do more with you. God is not done with you. And we, and we sing about, about building our life, and really that's what this is about the next few weeks, is, is, is making sure that our foundation is correct, making sure that our foundation is sure. And we're going to talk about being, about being intentional to be faithful this year. The Bible says this, it says, to the faithful ones... To the faithful ones, you show yourself faithful. How many of you know God is, God is faithful? That, that's Psalms 18, verses 25. Matter of fact, the Bible goes on in, in a, a couple chapters later in Psalms chapter 25, verse 10, and it says, all the ways of God are loving and faithful. Praise God. We, 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 see, in the, we see in Scripture, in, in, in the story of God, that, that God is faithful to each and every one of us. But what we also see in the Bible is we see people uh, who, who made an impact with their lives. We see individuals, ordinary people who accomplished big things for God because they did certain things. And that's really what I want to uh, try to hit the next couple of weeks. You know, they applied their lives to the promises of God. They applied their lives to the, to, we could say, the written instruction, the word of God. Listen, this is the best way to start the year. Start the year with, with a desire uh, to, to be in the word of God and let the word of God dwell in you richly, like it says in Colossians chapter 3. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, just as we take the next few minutes, we pray that your word that is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, God, that you will change us by your word. You will work on the inside of us and show us some of the things that we need to, we need to look at, some of the areas, Lord, where we need to, to, to build our life. Lord, maybe uh, some of us need to, need to build again. Lord, we're rebuilding in spots. And we just pray, God, that you'll do these, and G- do these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. So here, here's the thing. We all struggle to trust God. We all struggle to, uh, to be intentional sometimes, to, to, to be faithful. We struggle to, to, to step out in faith and obedience. We struggle to uh, keep our eyes on the goal that, that, that God has for us. But here's the thing, when we follow the Lord, when we do these things, when we walk in obedience, when we're intentional uh, to be faithful, listen, this changes everything for us. It, it absolutely changes things in our hearts, in our lives. And, and we're hoping this year to just gain God's perspective on some of the important things. Okay, we, we highlighted uh, some of this going into the Christmas season. Back in October and November, we highlighted some of the priorities that, that we, we needed to look, look at. We talked about values and priorities in life. And so it's really good for us to, to ask the questions like, what motivates you to reject the, the value system of the world and accept the value system of God? What, what motivates us in life to do these things? And really, the answer is, it's your perspective. And I want you to dial into this just for a minute before we jump into Hebrews. Are are you looking at the here and now, or are you looking at eternity? And see, Paul said it like this. He made it very plain. In Colossians chapter 3, he said, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated. And it was so important in that first verse that he said it again in the second verse. He just said it a little different. He said, set your mind on things above, not the earthly things. What are you focusing on today? Listen, I know there's a lot of, a lot of uh, wind and waves in life. 
There's a lot of difficulties in life. There's a lot of challenges out there. But what are you focusing on this morning? Your values are determined by what you're focusing on. They're determined by your vision. Okay, what are you focusing on? What are you, what are you looking at? What is the most important uh, things in 2024? Are you focusing on things that are going to last or things that won't last? And today our example is Moses. Okay, Moses, uh, Moses had to settle four key issues in life. And, and I'm going to give you those four key issues. We're going to break some of that apart this morning. And I just encourage you to write them down. But he had to, he was, a, what we need to see and understand is that Moses was a man of vision. And Moses had eyes of faith. And, and not only Moses, but his parents. The Bible says his mom and dad had eyes of faith. I love that. And I just want to stir the pot a little bit today. I want you to think about your agenda this year. I want you to think about the foundations of your life. And where you're at. And we want to look at Moses and how he lived his life. So Hebrews chapter 11, real quick. And we're going to look at 23 through 27. Number one, it says this. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months. Notice that his mom and dad had faith. His mom and dad were people of faith. They saw that God had given them an unusual child. And they were not afraid of what the king might do. Number two, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, he refused to be treated as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And he chose to share in the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of the Messiah than to own treasures in Egypt. For he was looking ahead. Look at this. He was looking ahead. Come on. He was looking ahead to the great reward that God would give him. Number three, it was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt. He was not afraid of the king. It says Moses kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. Listen, it's your perspective. Your perspective matters. And I, I love this particular passage. And we're just going to break apart Moses in his life and some of his challenges. Why did God choose Moses? Because Moses chose God. Moses chose the Lord. Moses had perspective. He had eyes of faith. We could look at his, his accomplishments. I mean, he, he was a man of many accomplishments. He received the, the Ten Commandments from God. Okay, the Bible talks about how he led the children of Israel out of 400 years of slavery in Egypt. And he wrote the first five books of the Bible. He's an amazing man. He has a lot of accomplishments. But he settled four key issues. Four key issues in life, and this is what they are. The first one is identity. Identity. Who am I? We see this in verse 24. He, he, he had to settle this identity issue. Responsibility is number two. What am I going to do with my life? We see this in verse 25. So who am I? What am I going to do with my life? And then there was priority. What is the most important thing to me in my life? And then the last one that we see is we see there was challenges, there was difficulty. How much am I willing to commit to what I am going to give my life for? It was going to be a challenge. It was going to be challenging for him, just like it's challenging for us. These are issues that every one of us has to deal with. You have to choose. Moses made the right choice in each instance. And the goal is for you to have perspective on, on what God can do in your life. God can do big things in your life this year. He wants to do big things for each of us. But we need to take the steps necessary. Are you hearing me? Take the steps necessary to accomplish the task that God has set before us. Paul said, for we are his workmanship ready to be used for good works so that we could walk in them. We can walk in the good works. Living the good life which he has made ready for us. And here's the thing. I mean, just break it down, just real, real simple. More than anything else, a person needs to know God's presence in their life. More than anything else. See, uh, the, the hard questions for stepping into the new year, let me just throw these out at you. Do you have a growing faith? Are you growing? Is your faith growing? Do you believe that God wants to work in your life? Are you expecting him to work in your life? Do you have a genuine prayer life and Bible study? Okay, these things are important. Because, because this Christian life, 
It, it's not something that you can dabble in and be, su- be successful. You have to immerse yourself in the things of God. No one grows in their Christian walk by ac- accident. Okay, it, it, it is a necessity to diligently study the, the Bible for a lifetime of spiritual growth. It is the difference maker, or we should say it like this. He is the difference maker. Are, are you hearing me? So number one, we're going to look at this identity. Discover what God made you to be. This is important this year. It's important as, as just in the next, in, as we lay foundation in the next quarter, Discover what God made you to be. You see, Moses was born a Hebrew slave, but he was raised as Pharaoh's grandson in Pharaoh's palace, which was the most luxurious place in the world. He had an identity crisis. He had to decide, am I Jewish or am I Egyptian? Am I a slave or am I royalty? He had to make a decision. The major consequences of his decision would affect the rest of his life. And I'm just breaking it down for you. If he chooses to say, I'm Pharaoh's grandson, his, he has fame, he has fortune, he has a promising career, he's heir to the throne. If he chooses to say, I'm Jewish born of Jewish slaves, he's rejected, he's despised, he's humiliated, he's thrown out, and he will live the life of a slave forever. But Moses refused to live the lie. He was a man of of integrity. He was a man of character. It says in verse 24, it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be treated as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So consider this word refused. It means to disown. It means to reject. It means to leave no no door uh, open. Moses insisted on being what God made him to be, and no one could convince him otherwise. Now, what application does that have for you? What What does it have for me? Listen, here's the thing. God made you for a purpose. Well, you've, you've heard me preach a series, a series on identity before. And I want you to get this. It is so important that you know who you are. God made you for a purpose. And he wants you to be you. He wants you to be yourself. He wants you to quit trying to be somebody else. Quit trying to be somebody you're not. Quit trying to conform. Quit trying to look like everybody else. Talk like everybody else. Buy the same things everybody else has. Be yourself. Just be you. And discover what God has made you to be. Who are you? If I was to ask ask you that question, I'm going to answer it. You're an object of his love. Come on. You can hold on to the truth that he knows you. He has a plan for you. He's got you. Listen, it's knowing who you are in Christ. This changes everything. The Bible says before I formed you in the womb. He knew you before he formed you in the womb. This phrase gives us a sense of destiny. Listen, it is a spiritual birthright. And I could take the, uh, the passage apart, uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But here is the thing. Your steps are ordered by God. He has prepared good works in advance for you. He has ordained your days. You are a living stone. You are a chosen generation. You are a member of the kingdom of priests. You are one of the many priests who serve collectively in the kingdom of God. You are a citizen of of heaven. You are owned by God himself. And when you accept Christ, God takes possession of you as his very own. Come on. That's what the Bible says about you. Every Christ follower has this in common. We all come from different places. We come from different backgrounds. We've had different experiences. My experiences are different than your experiences. We've walked many different paths. But these things are true to each of us who have surrendered our lives to Christ. It's what the Bible says. And what you need to understand is God has lifted us to this status. Come on. That was good. I worked for that one. He's lifted us to this status. This identity is important. Number two, responsibility. Accept the responsibility for your own life. And listen to me, generation. 
next generation, you need to hear this. Accept the responsibility for your own life. Okay, God has given you the freedom of choice, and the choices that you make will determine your future. Okay, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 25, Moses chose to share in the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. Listen, if you want to make an impact in your life, it's your choice. It's not my choice. You are as close to God as you want to be. Listen to me, church. You are as close to God as you want. Man, I could preach a whole sermon on that. You, it's you. You are as close to God as you want to be. You read your Bible as much as you want to read it. You pray as much as you want to pray. It's your choice. You see, God chose Moses as a baby, but at, the, at some point, Moses had to choose God. There was some point in his life where he had to say that, that, that I'm going to serve God. The Bible says it was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, in verse 24... See, the mark of maturity is when you start accepting responsibility for your own life. That's that's really the mark of maturity. It's when you stop blaming others. But Moses had had grown up. He He had to choose God and make that decision on his own. He had to go God's way because he wanted to go God's way. Let me just give you a couple of facts, and and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to direct them to myself just so you you can see it this way. Listen, I can't live off of other people's spiritual commitment. That's the first one. I can't do that. I need a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ for me. Okay, I needed to grow up. I needed to quit living off my parents' faith and get my own faith. Are are you hearing me? It says when Moses grew up, he chose. The second thing is I can't blame others for the direction in my life. You've got to hear me on this. See, society says the exact opposite. Now think about this, because it's true. Society says, oh, it's not your fault. Society's always looking to blame others. Blame other people, it's not your fault. Society says, oh, you're a product of your own environment. Are, are, are you hearing me? Blame, blame other people for your messed, up, your messed up life. But here's the thing, I can't blame other peop, people for the direction that I'm choosing in life. It's my life. I can't control the circumstances, but I can choose how I'm going to respond. Are, are, you, are you tracking with me? This, this, this is important. And number three, no one can ruin my life except me. I am the only one that can ruin my life. I'm free to choose my response to my circumstances. And, and here's the thing. You might have had the, the, the worst upbringing possible. You might have suffered There might have been a lot of challenges and tragedy. You might have suffered through an abusive situation. There might might have been been all kinds of things that that have happened to you. And and I am very sympathetic to all of that. But as real and tragic as those experiences are, they will not ruin your life. The only one who can do that is you. You're the only one. You have the choice to do life differently. You have the choice to accept him. You have the choice to receive him. You have the choice to serve him. Are you hearing me? Accept responsibility for your life. Number three, uh, establish a value system for your life. This is the priority, and this is huge. Okay, settle the issue of what is really important. Clarify it in your life. Moses clarified his values. He clarified his priorities. In verse 26, it says, Moses thought it was better to suffer for the sake of the Messiah than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to the great reward that God would give him. Moses had thought this out. And he had made a decision to do what was right. He evaluated his his options. He considered them. It's the same thing that each of us must do. We need to establish whether we're going to accept God's value system, God's way, God's plan, or not. You need to sit down and seriously consider, what in the world am I living for? Are we living for the truth? What are you living for today? You see, Moses regarded what is important and what is not important. See, most people have never done that. And and that's why there are failures in life. There are failures at life. 
They don't know why they are. They don't know what they want to accomplish in life. And they don't know what's really important. You need to establish values in life. Are you hearing me? Things that you can build your life on, the things that will be important. This year, establish God's values in your life. Establish the values of Scripture. The fact is, is that if you don't decide what is important in your life, others will do it for you. The world is more than happy to pressure you into its mold and to promote its its value system on you. So we have a lot of Christians today who have bought into the world's value system. We might even have a few in our church that have bought into the world's value system. Can I just tell you something? The Bible says, do not conform. It doesn't say think about it. It's a command. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. Come on, by the renewing of your mind. Praise God. What's ironic is that Moses, by world standards, he had it made. He did. He already has everything the world has to offer. He had power. He had pleasure. He had possession. Every whim would be satisfied in the palace of Egypt. He's heir to the throne. The wealth of the world was, was well, you got to remember, was con- concentrated in Egypt. Moses had it all, but he walked away from it. And like Moses, we need to learn. To, to, to say with conviction, we, and you got to get this, I am not going to be pulled into the hollow lifestyle that says life consists of pleasure, passion, possession, and prestige. I am not going to buy into that. I am not going to be pulled into this world's system. That's the kind of person that Moses was. That's, what, that's, that's what, uh, why he made such an impact with his life. He went against the flow. Let's just look real quick. There's, there's three things. Let's look at, look at uh, Moses and his value system. Number one, God's purpose is more valuable than popularity. God has a plan for my life. I'm going to lead these people to freedom. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He said, I'm going to give up the prestige and the popularity because it doesn't last. Pride and prestige are fleeting. Moses said, I'd rather fulfill God's purpose in my life and do what God has told me to do than be in this place of power and prestige. He wasn't impressed by popularity. Number two, people are more valuable than pleasure. Moses could, it says Moses chose to share in the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. I like this verse. Okay, the, 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 the Bible always tells the truth, right? Right? Are you with me? Are you here? Don't fall asleep. The Bible always tells the truth. And it says, it says there is pleasure in sin. The Bible says in this verse, listen, that sin is fun. That's what it says. It says it right there. Of course it's fun. If it wasn't, nobody would do it. But the Bible says it's fun. But the Bible also says the wages of sin leads to death. Right? It's only fun for a season. It's only fun for a short time. It it doesn't last. Moses could have temporary pleasure being the next pharaoh of Egypt. Or he could go do what God had called him to do and help people. Help people who were in pain, who needed to be set free. He could have stayed there in the pleasure. And today, no one would even know Moses and who he was. But he chose the right thing. And we are called to choose the right thing. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am called to choose the right thing. You are called this year to choose the right thing. Praise God. Number three of Moses' value system, God's peace is more valuable than possession. And we've kind of hit this, but it says in verse 26, then Moses thought it was better to suffer for the sake of the Messiah than to own treasures of Egypt. He was looking ahead for the great reward that God would give him. See, a couple verses back, he rejects the world's measure 
of success. Then he rejects the world's pleasure. And now he is rejecting the world's treasure. Are you seeing this? He does what is right because God's peace is more important than possession. He could have stayed. He could have stayed right there in the palace of Egypt and had every possession he ever wanted. But he knew that no possession would give him the inner peace. Are you, are you, are you, are you seeing this? He would have been miserable not doing what God had called him to do. See, peace comes not. Peace comes not from the things you own. Peace comes from being in the center of the will of God. Are you hearing me? Being in the center of the will of God, being what God made you to be, and doing what God made you to do. That's where peace comes from. If you need peace, that's where it's at. Are you in the center of God's will? Are you being what God made you to be? And are you doing what God made you to do? Praise God. What motivated Moses? What made him live this way? It says that he was looking ahead for the great reward that God would give him. Comes back to Paul. Set your heart on things above. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. He had this perspective. Nate. Number four. Here's the last one. Praise God. You're going to face challenges this year. You're going to hit a rough patch. You're going to have to learn how to press on. There's going to be wind. There's going to be waves. There's going to be people that don't like you. In the difficulty, and listen to me, get this. This is how we're going to wrap our morning. My prayer is that you have these four things. In the difficulty, never take your eye off the goal. Don't focus on the difficulty. It said Moses kept right on going. Some of the best words in that verse. He kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who was invisible. And you've heard me say it before, church, but returning to the old ways will never produce new results in your life. See, we see in Scripture the same example with Abraham a few verses before. In verse 15, just eight verses before, it says this about Abraham and his family. If they had been thinking of the country that they had left, they would have had the opportunity to go back there. They would have had the opportunity to go uh, uh, to return. That's why it's important that you keep your eyes ahead. You keep your eyes on Jesus. You never take your eye off the goal. Listen, and these, these four things work in your relationship with God, but they also work in other areas of life. You must visualize your goal and focus on it. You constantly keep it before you. Why is, is vision so important? Because vision draws you on so that when you want to give up, you don't. You have your eyes on the, on the ultimate reward. See, Moses spent most of his life waiting. And I want you to see this. Maybe you've been waiting for a long time. Maybe you've been in just this season of, 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 of delay. From the time that, that God gave Moses the vision, the dream of setting free the entire nation after 400 years of slavery, think about this, to the time it was fulfilled they, and, and they were ready to go into the promised land. It was 80 years. 80 years. Could you wait that long and not give up? Moses spent 40 years in Midian as a shepherd, just waiting for God to say, start. Do you ever get tired of waiting on God? Do delays ever tempt you to give up? Have you learned the difference between no and not yet? Have you learned that God's delays are not God's denials? Come on, are you hearing me? See, one of the tests of faith is how long can you wait? How long can you wait? Listen, you must keep your eye 
on the vision, on the goal, on, on what counts in life so that you don't get discouraged. Okay, obstacles are what you see when you take your eye off the goal. What are you looking at? Are you looking at the obstacle or are you looking at the opportunity? Are you looking at the problems or the one who overcomes the problems? You know what Jesus said about all these things in John 16, verse 33? I have told you all these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world there will be trouble. There will be difficulty. There will be challenges. There will be things out there in this world. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Listen, it's all a matter of vision. What you focus on with your life. That's the key to endurance. That's the key to perspective. And that's what Moses did. Listen, you do your part and God will do his part. Amen. Because this is what God did. This is a, a reoccurring theme that we see in Scripture, that He proves Himself. Okay, the Bible says that our God delivers. Okay, He delivers. He delivers His people through guiding, guiding them. He delivers His people uh, for His glory. Amen? Or aren't you thankful that, that He wants to get glory in your life? He delivers His people through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because what we learn in the story of God is that his heart is for his people. His heart is for you. We all struggle to trust God, to step out in faith and obedience. We struggle to keep our eyes on the goal. But when we follow the Lord, when we walk in obedience, changes everything where do you need to obey what do you need to surrender what do you need to give up you see we get to see the power of God in our lives if we serve him let's let's trust God and let's 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 be faithful let's be intentional to be faithful this year with our life here's the truth the truth is you aren't perfect I am not perfect we are all a little messed up. But God isn't calling us to perfection before He uses us. He's calling us to obedience rooted in the faith of who He is. He is ready and He's able to draw near to us with His presence and work in us and through us with His power. He wants you to win. He wants you to be successful. He wants 2024 to be the year of growth and change in your life. And I'm praying that over you. So if there's an area that you, that you need to grow, then, then seek God for help. Romans 121, they, they, they actually call that, I love this passage, I lift my eyes to the hills, where does my help come from? It's actually called the, the, the soldier's prayer, or, or an, another, another uh, title would be the traveler's prayer. I lift my eyes to the hills, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Can I, can I tell you that God wants you to live in freedom? And I just want you to let that sink in for just a little minute. Just, just close our eyes in this place. God wants you to live in freedom. Let's just marinate in that. Have you ever, have you ever marinated a steak? And you just let it, you let it sit in that marinade? Let's marinate in the fact that God wants you to live in freedom. He wants you to have freedom. Matter of fact, the Bible says, brothers and sisters, you were called to be free. Freedom is your call. Freedom is your calling. God doesn't want you to live a constrained life. He wants you to have this abundant life. My purpose is to give them, give them a satisfying life. Listen, if you're not living a full and satisfying life, it's not because God doesn't want you to have it. He wants to set you free. He wants you to be free from the pain in your past, the regret, the resentment that keeps you from being all that He wants you to be. He wants you to be free from the pressures, all of the pressures in the present. Okay, this is the stress, this is the exhaustion that you face trying to manage the complexities of everyday life. He wants to help you with that. He wants, to, he wants you to be free from the worries about tomorrow. These are the worries about your future or, or the future of those that you love. God wants you to be free of all that. The Bible says more and better life 
in 2024. The, the question is, is will you set your agenda aside? Will you live for Jesus, amen? Will you serve him? To the faithful ones, you show yourself faithful, come on. To the faithful ones, you show yourself faithful. I want you to stand in this place. And I'm gonna pray over you as we, as we, as we close. And my prayer is that there's change in your life. The psalmist prayed this, teach us to make the most of our time so that we may grow in the wisdom of God. Teach us to make the most of our time so that we may grow. God wants you to grow. So let's trust God and let's step out in faith and obedience this year. Let's cling to the promises of God, the written instructions. Let's set your heart on things above where Christ is seated. Set your mind on things above, not the, uh, the earthly things. That word set, that's, that, 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 that's, that's like taking an item and setting it in its place where it, it belongs. Let's set our heart where it belongs on Christ. May we make the most of our time in 2024 and serve the Lord and grow in wisdom because through the faithful ones, he shows himself faithful. My friends, my church, be intentional to be faithful. Give some effort to your relationship with God because God wants to produce in you to bring glory to his name. Identity, responsibility, priority, and in the challenges and in the difficulty, keep your eye on the goal. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for this church. Lord, for everyone that is with us, those that are with us online today, we pray, Lord, that we would keep the main thing, the main thing. And Lord, like Paul, we would press on. Like Paul would say that our life, my life is worth nothing less unless I'm serving Jesus. Lord, may we build our foundation on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this year. Lord, may we set aside the agendas. May we set aside the schedules and the calendars. Lord, may we set aside the, the idolatry that is in our heart and in our life. Oh God, first of all, we just say forgive us of our sins. God, we want to start brand new this morning. Your word says in Isaiah 43, 19, that you will make all things new. I pray today that you'll do that in the heart of each and every person that's here, that, that Lord, we would leave this place knowing that we are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. And Lord, we're putting one foot in front of the other, Lord, as we're going into this year saying, we're gonna build our life on you. We're gonna serve you. We're gonna pray. We're gonna meet with you. We're gonna know you. We're gonna read the word of God. We're gonna apply the promises of God. We're gonna build relationships. We're gonna worship Jesus. Us. We're going to come and be with you. Lord, today, I pray in your name by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you'll give us the fortitude. You'll give us the, the, the tenacity. Lord, you'll give us the confidence that we have in you, Christ Jesus, to serve you with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. Lord, that those words, love the Lord your God with all your heart, God, that would resonate in our spirits this year that would resonate in our souls. God, that we would love you with all of us, with every part of us. Well, God, I pray you'll bless your church today. I pray that you'll touch them, Lord, as we step into our brand new year. And God, we give you praise. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. Amen. May the Lord bless you, keep you. Take that challenge, put it in your heart. I'm not praying for you. We want to pull some loot, God. We're so glad you could join us online today. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you enjoyed the service. I just want to remind you that if you're planning on worshiping by giving today, there are two different ways you can do that. You can give online through a link on the website, mpag.church, or you can give by mail, 503 KIT Boulevard. North Pole, Alaska, 99705. 
I hope you're having a great day. We're praying for you, praying that the Lord will bless you and keep you. Love you, and we'll see you next week.